Previously on the Rod Peterson Show. NHL Top 5, Bottom 5. Let's get into the NHL Top 5, Bottom 5. As compiled by yours truly and brought to you by Bet Regal, our exclusive betting partner. This was the easiest top five I've ever done in my life. Quite frankly, I looked at the overall standings in the NHL. The number one team is the Calgary Flames, who beat up Pittsburgh here last night 4 1. Number two is the Boston Bruins at 6 and 1. I don't expect that to last. Number three is the Vegas Golden Knights. And although they are number one in the Western Conference, Calgary beat them. So that puts Calgary ahead of them. So it's one Calgary, two Boston, three Vegas, four the Carolina Hurricanes, which is a surprise to nobody. And number five, Peter DeBoer's Dallas Stars. Let's see for how long it goes. But they lost to Boston last night. The bottom five, this is going 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. So the fifth worst team in the NHL is the Columbus Blue Jackets. Sorry, Johnny Hockey. Fourth worst team is the Anaheim Ducks. Let's pick it up. Quack, quack. New York Islanders is next, and that doesn't bother me because I'd have picked to be last in the Metro. They're not going to get out of the bottom five all year, I don't think. Second worst team is the San Jose Sharks. And by the time this is all said and done, they'll probably be the worst. But right now, the worst team is the Vancouver Canucks. Change my mind. Get ready for the Rod Peterson Show. If Bo Levi Mitchell is up for trades next year, what team takes him or does he retire? He's not going to be traded. He's a free agent. He'll sign wherever he wants. Rumor is in Sask. Bo Levi Mitchell was looking at houses in the Queen City uh, on the weekend, Jeff. Jeff just shook his head. You know what Ron Lancaster said, the little general? In Regina, if they haven't heard a rumor by noon, start one. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the RP Show. Coming in hot on this Thursday. It is your favorite daytime sports talk show. We're on Game Plus TV and on the radio. WQEE 99.1 FM Metro Atlanta. Hot sports talk. Hot, hot, hot. You see, uh, for those that are watching on television right now and live on YouTube, our COO Lee Genier is with us here on the stage bar. Uh, We don't waste time here. I'm going to jump right into what we got going on. Hour one, a lot of hockey talk beginning next segment. Perry Shockey is going to be with us. Perry S. Hockey, longtime scout of the Los Angeles Kings, a hockey coach of the Warriors, Hurricanes, Pats. That's where I got to know him. And he was complaining to me about hockey analysts last week and what they don't know what they're talking about. And I said, Shocks, then you get down here to the Gray Eagle. You come on and you give us the real goods. And he will. That's coming up next segment. And Mike Abu Meshrick, 10 year CFL veteran to talk. Uh, CFL playoffs, the final week of the regular season, and all the, uh, the rest. You ready to go, Lee? I am always ready to go, Roddy. Okay, can, let's, let's get go. Can we hit the quick six show horn, please? Let's go, Director Jordan. Thank you. Let's go. We're in it to win it. We're going to open with hockey, of course. Ryan Nugent Hopkins scored his 200th career goal to break a tie in the third period. Stuart Skinner stopped 35 shots, and the Edmonton Oilers beat St. Louis 3-1. To be honest, I dozed in and out, kind of slept through the second period of that. Uh, The Blues are not an exciting team, okay? But I woke up in time to watch the third, and the Oilers played really well. They looked good. That was, for me, the marquee game of the night. Zach Hyman had a goal and a helper. Uh, Jesse Pujarvi also scored to help the Oilers win their first road game after starting the season on a six-game homestand for the Blues. Ryan O'Reilly scored for St. Louis and Jordan Bennington finished with 25 saves. I don't think the Blues make any apologies whatsoever for their style of play. It's just not exciting. In New York, Kyle Palmieri scored twice. Ilya Sorokin stopped 41 shots for his first shutout of the season. And the New York Islanders beat the Rangers 3-0. Uh, at, uh, where was that? I think that was at MSG. Either MSG. way, was it? They said it was the most saves by a goalie in the Battle of New York since... Yaroslav Halak did it in 2018, and he was playing for the Islanders at the time. Last night, he's playing for the Rangers. How about that? How about the only, that? Yeah, the only How third game. That? Let's get Lee in. He's got lots to say, clearly. Uh, in Anaheim, Brandon Hagel scored the tie-breaking power play goal with 4.27 to go to lead Tampa over Anaheim 4-2. 
The Ducks have lost six in a row. That brings up the poll question for today for Capital Auto Mall University College and Center. They have dealerships all across the Canadian prairies and the state of California. Which NHL team is wearing a disguise? Halloween's coming up. Which one is wearing a disguise? Are the Ducks this bad? They've lost six in a row. Are the Senators this good? They're going after their fifth straight home win tonight. Are the Vancouver Canucks this bad? 0-5-2. Oh, or the Buffalo Sabres, are they this good at 4-2? and two? Your options are the Ducks, Canucks, Sabres, and Sens. Hi, Which one of them it. is wearing a disguise? Mm-hmm. Find out everything you need to know at broncoplumbing.com. They're our official uh, sponsor of our NHL coverage and Rod's Rant. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, Hiring Now. Okay, Lee, this is what I told you I was going to get to with you. The NBA. The Raptors won again. Spicy P scored 20 points and matched his career high with 13 assists. Gary Trent Jr. scored a season high 27. And Toronto beat Philly 119-109. Did you watch it? I caught the highlights, actually. I didn't watch the whole game, but caught the highlights. Great win. Yeah. Right? There's a blossoming, burgeoning rivalry between the uh, Sixers and the Raptors that has to go uh, with... Playoff beatings passed. That's when you really build a rivalry. These teams clearly don't like each other, and the Raptors got the upper hand last night. But there are two other stories from Wednesday night. Troy, Trey Young of our Atlanta Hawks scored 35 points, and Atlanta beat Detroit at 118-113 to open a two-game set at Little Caesars Arena. The teams will meet again Friday night. And in Denver, Nikola Jokic had 31 points. Jamal Murray, the Canadian, hit a big three-pointer. And the Denver Nuggets kept the Lakers winless with a 110-99 victory. Lakers 0-4 under new coach Darvin Ham. Why am I hearing so much about the NBA on the highways and byways of this country while I'm in Canada, the Great White North? Well, Why am because I hearing it? you know what? There are 22 Canadians that play in the NBA right now. So you're talking, you know, you've got 30 NBA teams with, you know, roughly 320 p- players. And you've got 22 Canadians playing in the NBA. I mean, it is so tough to crack an NBA roster. And you have Canadians just playing at the top of their game, um, not only in the NBA, but in the NCAA as well. So Canada is becoming a basketball threat hotbed yeah and i'm here for it here's the thing man i like the nba a lot and fortunately and we're not ever really going to delve into soccer a ton because i don't understand the game i understand basketball pretty well actually and if that's what our viewers want it's great but i'm i think part of the reason why i think watch sports center last night 20 minutes of it dedicated to nba highlights meanwhile the western hockey league which a lot of us were raised on it ain't on tv I'm going to write about this in my column on the weekend. I won't go too far into it. But some of these Canadian leagues are just drifting into obscurity. Uh, And I would put the CFL in that, and that's the third point. There's just no pub. It's not in front of people's face. They're going away. Agree or disagree? I totally agree with you, Rod. And uh, they could do a much better job. They have, like, you know, a a blank canvas and it's for them to paint that picture and they're not doing a very good job of painting that picture right now unfortunately you just the the public is just the shiny toy ah they talk about what is put in front of their face that's what it is that's exactly Corey's watching in winnipeg he says detroit and orlando look bad see he's talking about the nba mondo hockey talk coming up next segment with perry shockey people want to talk about the Arizona Coyotes visiting visitors dressing room and why it's so bad a lot of things we'll get into with shocks but not here Lee's not here to talk hockey he's here to talk NBA and football by the way support for the RP show is brought to you by Manscaped they're the best in men's below the waist grooming trust me their products are precision engineered tools for your family jewels and their latest serving is the performance package It's the ultimate men's hygiene bundle join over 6 million men worldwide who use Manscaped with this exclusive offer Use the promo code RPSHOW and get 20% off and free worldwide shipping. Six million men, that's about 12 million balls. And they're happy customers. How about that? Point three, CFL most outstanding players. Uh, Did you see the list come out yesterday? I saw some of it, yeah. Yeah. Thoughts? Well, I mean, I think the big the big story is going to be around Nathan Rourke and, you know, the nine games that he played. Obviously, he's going to start tomorrow night, uh, and we'll see what he does. But was the nine games that he played enough to get him to win that outstanding player? 
you know what, and it's very debatable. I mean, obviously, he put up some major yards, um, and, you know, the, the, the Lions took a dive after that. So, um, you know, it'll be really interesting to see how the, uh, how the writers uh, vote on that. And coaches. So this is what it is, for those that don't know. For the new viewers and listeners, the Canadian Football League, each, play, uh, each team at the end of the year, they have a vote on six categories. The MVP of your team, the top defensive player of your team, the top Canadian on your team, the top offensive lineman on your team, top, uh, top special teams player, and rookie of the year. And that's the one thing that I'll never get, and that's why I brought Shocks in here to talk hockey. I was in the CFL full-time for 20 years. I still don't understand stuff. Could you imagine the American Hockey League Shocks having an award for the top Canadian? Like, let's just stop and think about that for a second. Or top American. But whatever. It's a CFL thing, so I don't want to laugh at that, but I just, I just, I don't understand it. It, it is important, yet, eh. Well, my, my argument about this is the big fight that I got in a couple of years ago, where my guy, Cody Fajardo, who's being run out of Saskatchewan, was up, he was the West Division MVP. Just two seasons ago, uh, he lost to the Hamilton Tiger Cats East Division rep Brandon Banks. And I went to Twitter and I said, well, clearly Cody should win it for these reasons. 13 wins, the most in 100 years for the Riders, 5,000 yards. And people are like, oh, no, no, you don't understand. He was more valuable to his team, but Brandon had a more, more outstanding year for whatever his yards were. I was more promoting my guy. But if you want to get down to it, Lee, the, uh, this age-old argument, most valuable player versus most outstanding player, Nathan Rourke is the most outstanding player in the league. He missed half the year, and he's still leading half, a lot of categories in the CFL. So that should make him eligible, I would think. I, I would certainly hope so, and I hopefully there is consideration given for it. Who would you vote for? He would be my choice. I mean, everybody's going to, you know, I think go Zach Claris, but, you know, you have to, like I said, like I say, leading in so many categories, Nathan Rourke, you know, and, and maybe tomorrow night, maybe sums that up. And it depends on how he plays and comes back and um, comes back from this injury. Kevin, the medium's watching our good friend. He says, you all know I'm a Lions fan and Rourke is amazing, but you need to play more than half a season to be named MVP. Do you? He's got a chance to win it here. Let's let the voters decide. He's come back. Nothing against our guy, Zach Caleros in Winnipeg. He's led them to... 14 wins, and now Friday night, we'll see what happens. This is a nothing game. It's a throwaway game. Friday night, Winnipeg home to uh, the BC Lions, but Nathan Rourke returns. Unfortunately, the voting's all, well, it'll be done now, but I think it's based on regular season. It is. They change it all it the is. time. So uh, James in Manitoba writes in and says, no one's talking CFL. The BC Lions sold 10,000 tickets yesterday, so someone must be talking. Sure, it's not as bad as it has been the last few years, particularly there in Vancouver. But I'm sitting here in Calgary, and I don't hear a whole lot of talk about the Stampeders and the Edmonton Elks. Forget about it. Uh, my vote would be for Nathan Rourke. Why not have him be the MVP of the CFL, even though we only played half a season? That would be a hell of a story. It would be. And that's probably the reason they sold 10,000 tickets yesterday, knowing that he is starting to come back. And so... You know what is there? There is your answer right there. It's a hell of a story. Uh, by the way, a word from our sponsor, Edo Japan. Edo Japan's fast and friendly service plus online ordering options are easy and convenient when you're on the go. Check out Edo Japan today. My fourth point is uh, six Canadian NHL teams are in action tonight, but I'll delve more into that with Shockey Hockey, Perry S. Hockey coming up next, including the comments by Vancouver Canucks general manager Patrick Alvin who said he'll continue to support head coach Bruce Boudreau despite the team being winless through seven. Obviously, Shocks has some thoughts on that. Uh, baseball, point five Yankees owner Hal Steinbrenner plans to keep Aaron Boone as his manager. Boone agreed last October to a three-year deal with a team option for 2025. In his fifth season as skipper, New York sprinted to a 61-23 and record this year, sparking comparison to 1998. Uh, that championship team then, but hampered by Yang, uh, injuries, they went 38 and 40 the rest of the way. They won the pennant, but because they're not in the World Series, they want the manager fired. 
Yeah. I mean, New York, they'll eat you alive. Right. Though. And I said to Lee, if you've spent any time in New York at all, which I've spent a lot, I got my intervention training there. Um, you want to whine in Canada about how the media treats you? Go spend some time in New York. What did, what did uh, Mike Tyson say? I'll eat your children. <laughs> how about children? that? That's New York. They, that, oh, that is New <laughs> it's York. harsh. You don't win the World Series, you're gone. Yeah, they won a pennant, but didn't win the World Series. Yeah, now the manager's future's in trouble. And and lastly, Thursday night football. Tom Brady and Lamar Jackson have mutual respect and admiration for one another's success. The seven-time Super Bowl champion and one of the NFL's best young quarterbacks meet tonight on Thursday night football. Lamar versus Tom, Tampa Tom. Obviously, I'll be cheering for the Bucs. They're favored by 1.5 at Bet Regal, our exclusive betting partner. Deal or no deal? I, I, got, I got a deal on them. You're I'm taking, taking the Bucs to win at home? Absolutely. Listen, forget about the game. You're following Tom and Giselle's split more than anybody. Hey, man, that's, that's uh, like the uh, housewives of Tampa Bay. It would be a great show, wouldn't it? Yeah, I mean, you know what? I'm I'm more interested to see how Tom overcomes this adversity. He's come through a lot of adversity uh, in his career, come back from some, you know, being down. So this will be, you know, I think the ultimate test is uh, the way his life is playing out in the media and his divorce and how that's affecting him professionally. So I, I'm really excited to see him kind of come back get this monkey off his back and bring this team back to a winning form you uh you've never been through divorce have you uh, no no you haven't Thank God. spoken like the media that are talking about this divorce gonna derail tom i've been through it when you're working that's when you don't think about it that's when you're at your best idiots so yeah i think tom will win tonight now they've lost three or four or, is it four or five but it's not because of that it's their team's not as good that's why the quarterbacks get all the money, though. Yeah. Right? They, I mean, get they don't the have the... They get yeah. all the blame. Yeah. They um, don't have the receiving core that they had. No, not game. at all. Ryan McCarthy in Saratoga, New York's watching. He says, Rod's right. New York City, Philly, Boston media are super critical if you don't win a title. It's championship or bust in those cities. That will be one of the many items that is going on my tombstone that is now nine stories high, but it'll be Rod's right. Get the hashtag going. Vancouver Canucks fans had the audacity and media to say that I was wrong when I said the Calgary Flames are the number one team in the NHL going into the regular season. And now they're too busy crying to apologize. They Please. haven't won a game. I'll see you a little later, okay? See they have the not won a game. But playoffs? They're trying to win a game. Shockey hockey next. It's the RP show on the Game Plus TV network, YouTube Live, and of course on the radio on your southern home of sports and talk. WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. 
That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Dark Horse Bets today. Beat. I gotta hit the beat. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Business owners and marketers. Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with the Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. We are live from Great Eagle Resort and Casino in Calgary. And as promised, it's a big hockey day. Shockey hockey time. Perry S. Hockey, our good friend, the uh, former scout of the... Well, yeah, there you go. Live looking in the casino, by the way. You can text the show now, 902-518-3033. Perry Shockey, longtime scout of the Los Angeles Kings and uh, head coach of the Warriors, Pats, and Hurricanes. Made the drive up. How you doing, Shocks? I'm doing awesome. Good for you. Yeah. Make yourself yeah. a little, get a little closer to that microphone, though, if you don't mind. I got to get a slide in. Just been a while. Get it? Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I wasn't looking at you too close there. No worries. There you go. So you, there we go. Now we're all comfortable. Shocks texted me last week, and he says, these analysts don't know what they're talking about. With the Flames, I said, then you come on the show and you tell me what's up with Let's start with the Calgary Flames. Are they the number one team in the National Hockey League? I would say right now, yeah. Yeah. I, they got four lines that they can throw anything at anybody. I honestly think they could play their fourth line against most teams' second line and just pound, the, pound, pound them up. Watch your, watch your oh, language. Well, yeah, no, I'm not on the bench now. <laughs> I got to tell you a story. I was, when, I was at the Absolutely. when I was at the Memorial Cup, I was, uh, the game's going on, and you know, you know where the cameras are and stuff. And Anyhow, the cameras weren't on me, and... I went, looked at the referee, like, and I dropped one, like, you got to be kidding me kind of thing. I never thought anything of it. That night, my daughters, I'm talking to my daughters on the phone. They were, they were there staying in a hotel, and they phoned me and said, Dad, we're really disappointed with your language. And I said, what are you talking about? They said, well, we saw, we, could, we saw you. They had the camera on you, and then I knew what it was. And I said, you're disappointed in me? I'm disappointed in, in you. myself. Oh. I'm disappointed in you that you knew what I was taught, what I was saying. 1997, whole Quebec. Yeah. Well, yes, I won. Yeah. Slide just a little closer to the mic, and then okay. let's go. So, okay, so we start with the Flames. He agrees with me. They're the number one team in the National Hockey League. I want you to take a stab at our poll question today for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, and that is, which of these teams is wearing a mask, a disguise, as we approach Halloween? The Ducks, who have lost six in a row. The Vancouver Canucks, who are winless, as you know. The Buffalo Sabres, who are off to a 4-2 and two start. Or the Ottawa Senators, who are after their fifth straight home win tonight. Are any one of those teams not what we're seeing through the opening couple weeks? No, I think they are what they are. I think Buffalo, I'm impressed with Buffalo. They're a big team. They work hard. They're young. Now, what's going to be interesting is when they get on a bit of a slide, whether or not they can recover. Because that there's a maturity that goes with that. Like when you get rolling and they're confident and stuff like that, and they've played, they've played some really good teams and beat them. So, 
you know, it'll be interesting to see if they have a little bit of a setback. Um, I mean, I feel bad for Vancouver. I think that there's a calamity of things that are going on. How would you get out of that, Shocks, if you were them? Um, Well, I think they have to be realistic. You know, your your scouting has to be better. You have to, you know, be deeper in in the people. You have to have a plan and and a depth chart on what you want. I think it doesn't matter what, what level of hockey it is. You can't just look at today. You have to look at tomorrow. You know, we were talking earlier about Bedard, you know, and how he ended up in Regina and, you know, whether or not they're going to trade him, which they say they don't. Like, let's be honest. If you're, if you're running a franchise and you can get, you know, you can get huge assets for a dividend that you're going to basically pass them by because chances are he, you're not getting them back. And at the end of the day, what's best for your team and your brand over a period of time? You know, sometimes you have to take a bit of a setback, but I think if you get enough depth in your organization, I think that's one of the things they're talking about now. Is like Skinner, for example. There was a time when the Oilers goalie. Yeah, they're not. They weren't all that high on him. I watched him in junior. I watched him play. He's a big guy. He plays well, and he'd be no different than Markstrom. If you let those guys see the puck, they'll make the save. When they get in trouble is when there's two or three turnovers in the zone. And they get an odd man situation. It's like they got a choice of sh- this guy shooting the puck or that guy shooting the puck. So what do they you do? Pick one. That, well, they, what they normally do is try to play in somewhere in the middle so that they can make an adjustment. If they know that they got the shooter, they're going to take them. And I yes. think that's the biggest thing. And I, last year we talked about the playoffs. When your best players are your are really good defensively, that's where you win games because those guys come out of a game and they're plus two or plus three or something like that after a game, that means that they scored three times more goals than the other team did. That's going to win you hockey games. When, you, the, when the top two lines come out and they're both even and, you know, uh, that, or even minus, you know, what, however it works. I just think that plus minus, I look at plus minuses all the time. Of course. Well, so I hope you're enjoying the hockey talk as much as we are. Pay attention. You'll learn something. From Shocks. You don't listen to me. Hopefully you listen to Shocks. And uh, you can smile, Shocks. It's okay. Yeah, okay. But hey, they like the stories too. So John Ohm in Winnipeg writes that he says, Perry Shocky must have a great Hollywood story. Scouting for L.A. Come on. Shock us. Shocks. You got a few from down uh, yeah, there? Yeah, well, yeah, I do have one. And um, <laughs> we're down there for uh, training camp, and we were doing everything, and we got done, and somebody says, hey, let's go on over to Hollywood area there. There's some really cool bars going over there. We went over there, and uh, Rodman was there, and a bunch some of some other interesting people. interesting things to see. Hey? Oh, man. I'm going home early. Of like, course. It's just there, there's an element there that was, you know, I mean, it was sensationalized and stuff, but you realize that a lot of those people in that, in that town are nocturnal. They don't come out until, they don't come out until six o'clock Every night. town has them shocks, but yeah. in LA, they're the stars. Yeah. Oh yeah. And it's, <laughs> and you, you just see that. And I mean, it is what it is, but you know, and I, and I appreciate people for their talents and what, what they do, but you know, sometimes enough's enough, but they just get so wrapped up in it, but it's not real. I think the players that live in LA, I think that they have some a little limited contact with that, but they really have to draw a line because you just can't travel in that crowd at all. Well, they've had a team there for a long time, and uh, if guys get swallowed up in it, they don't last, and I see what you're saying. Yeah. Now, where this started, Shocks and I, and we talked quite regularly, but it was after the Flames lost to the Sabres the other night. 6-3 was the game. And the next day you texted me and you said, they're roasting Markstrom in this town. Yeah, for Fair sure. Fair or unfair? Totally unfair. I think my philosophy is, is you look at how he ends up in the situation that he's in for them to get some of the shots. Like there were screens, there was, you know, two on ones. Uh, I think the one goal, they had three turnovers in their own zone. And I'm sure Daryl Sutter's talking to him about it. But the, what I find right now, and it's interesting because now guys are hedging their bets on Markstrom and they're kind of letting him not saying, well, you know, he's got a pretty good record. He played good the other night, you know, all these sort of things. I think they got a great goaltending tandem. I think that if if the guys play the way they're supposed to, the way Daryl wants them to play, Markstrom's going to be a standout because he's very defensive orientated and he wants his guys to eliminate people and win one-on-one battles. And when you lose three battles in a row, I used to have a philosophy. It was funny because Chris Phillips, I ran into him, and he, this is where is well, he? He's he's in uh, 
He's still in uh, Ottawa. He works for the team. Okay. He does some stuff on the PR side, I think. But um, he told me, he says, you know, Shocks, I we used to be on the bench, and I would I just yell out to the guys, shoot it in our own net. Just shoot it in our own net. See if he's awake. No, no, because what? we had so many turnovers. You might as well oh. shoot, it, shoot it in your own net, get the pain over with, and go back to the face-off dot, because that's what I used to say to the guys when there'd be three or four turnovers. I just say to the guys on the bench, why don't we just shoot it in our own net? Because that's where we're headed. That's that's the the trailer we're making here. But um, <laughs> it would it would take less time. Yeah, like let's just stop <laughs> stop the pain of watching this. I just don't want to watch any more of that. Just get it over with. But uh, <laughs> the game is the game is very simple in many ways, you know. And you know, and I tell people all the time, and that is, you, I ask people all the time, what's a game? And it's five on five, and they go, yeah. I says, no, it's not. It's five one on ones. When you line up. At, at every face-off, when you line up, you look across the D-man, you pretty much know which three guys are going to be coming at you. Don't let them win any battles, whether offensively or defensively. And, I mean, they didn't build Vegas on, on the money they lost. They play the percentages, and that's what the game is about. Just as many times as you can create odd-man situations. You know, in the playoffs, how many times, you know, you just see there's a three-on-two or two-on-one. Everybody gets excited because you have a numerical advantage to score. Well... That should be from day one, not the, just the playoffs. That's Well, and so speaking of that, I think we had a poll last year on one of the shows, and we were here at Grey Eagle. Who's, who will go further in the playoffs, the Orders or Flames? And it was like a slam dunk, Flames. And who was the better team? And talent-wise, they probably were. But who won the series? It wasn't even close. Orders in five. Who got to play their game? Who Tell got me to play why. Their game? Why? Well, Calgary played a game through, like, they had a, they had a battle against the Stars. Like, I mean, they went seven games, and, you know, that was a battle. They come out of there, and then they're going up against run-and-gun hockey. Like, go back to the trenches. You know, play your style. Just, you know, wait them out. You know, you don't have to chase them all over the ice. They're going to eventually come back. Everybody's going to come to the net. So just figure out a way to pick them up as they come in and eliminate them and then take advantage of your opportunities. And I think the other thing is, is I think when you get... Yeah, I just think that... Calgary's Calgary's built for the long haul. You know, I it's interesting because I, I got uh, chastised one time by a mom when I was doing color for the Calgary Hitmen and they were playing the Kootenai Ice. And Jason Jaffrey was playing for the Kootenai Ice and uh, Chris Beach was playing for Calgary. And I, and I said on the broadcast, you know, we have a saying in hockey that we, is we don't trade thoroughbreds for plow horses. Now, a lot of people take that as a derogatory comment, but you know what? When you're in those tough games, I want the plow horses. I want the big diesel burners. I don't need the I don't need the high octane guys. I need somebody that can battle it up. Carry the load. Yeah. Carry the load. And at the end of the day, Jason Jaffrey only played, I think, played ten games less than Chris Beach in the National Hockey League. So I mean, you just seen that he had a role and when he was in an opportunity to play that role and you know, he, he got an opportunity. Interesting to play. thing about Jason Jaffrey, by the way, good friend of mine. I won't say whom, but... Uh, his mom, I think his mom's well, still mad at me. You know, parents being mad at what you say about their son. <laughs> Hello, I could write a book about it. Yeah. But this one guy, he worked for the Jets and the Manitoba Moose at one time. He doesn't anymore, but he said Jason Jaffray played for both teams, right? Mall, uh, autograph signing at the mall when Jason Jaffray is with the Winnipeg Jets. Line up for two hours down the hall. Next weekend, he's sent down to the Moose. Autograph signing, Jason Jaffray, Manitoba Moose. Two people show up. Same guy. Yeah. Different teams. Yeah. But Austin Matthews, and we have a few minutes left here. I'm, I don't know if you saw Sports Center. He's talking about how he hasn't scored. In, he's got one goal all year. And he's like, I'm not worried. Right? He goes, I go through these things. And, but all Sports Center, they're talking about Austin Matthews hasn't scored. Daryl Sutter said it the other day. Where the Flames got in trouble was that it was all about individual accomplishments oh, until yeah. he got here. Huberdor. There was everybody's asking, wow, what about Huberdor? Right. Yeah. What is he doing out there? He's put. He's still making, giving guys opportunities to score goals. He rags does the what he does. You know, I mean, he's got he's got skills up the wazoo. You know, it's just a matter of those guys finding their pace and their timing. And when they do, Ooh. watch out. <laughs> right. If the Flames are what they are, and they're going to get better, oh, for which, sure, for which sure. they are. Yeah. We got time for this one. Corey in Winnipeg wants to know who you think has the best scouting staff in the National Hockey League today. Um. Jeez, I think when you look at the teams that have Tampa Bay, no? I, 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 here's what I do. I always go to the second tier. 
I mean, and I, I'm not to be disrespectful, but my mom, who doesn't go to very many hockey games, if she went to a hockey game, she can probably figure out who are the top guys. Sure. It's that second tier. The guys that you can get that are role players and the guys that are all just on the cusp of making the turn when they guys, you know, and I no disrespect, but they saw him, they didn't see him as a player. And I just said, if he loses, if he loses 40 pounds or 20 pounds or turns it to muscle, he's going to be a beast. Because that guy has skills you cannot, you can't teach guys that. But come to him instinctively. And, you know, look at the career he had. And, and really, you see his personality at the end is, <clears throat> he had enough money. You know, he wanted to go ice fishing north of Winnipeg. When he was injured there, I remember when he was injured, uh, line, the storyline was he was, he was out again. Well, he'd go ice fishing because he was injured. He, you know, he just thought, well, I'll just go do something because I got to do something. And he'd stop and, you know, stop somewhere and visit with some guys and whatever. And then all of a sudden there's these rumors about him. He just wanted to play the game and move on with his life. And when he had enough, he wants to, he wants to go hunting, fishing, and watching football. Maybe. Something's happened with my camera, but you can still hear me, so hang on. I know we've got a third camera there, so I'll let the guys in the crew work on that, and we'll be right back. More with Perry Shockey in a sports update after this. Mike Gabby Lecture coming up in Hour 2. We're live on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and, of course, WQBE 99.1. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Grey Eagle Resort and Casino. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any make or model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. People donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. Dark Horse Bets today. Beat. I gotta hit the beat. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Business owners and marketers. 
Okay, we know you think we're pretty cool. That's why we want you to share in the coolness factor. Partner with The Rod Peterson Show and market your business every weekday to sports lovers just like yourself. Take advantage of our many cost-effective commercial and promotional opportunities. Tell the world about your business. Yes, the world. Thanks to Game Plus TV and the Rod Peterson Digital Network. Contact us today and find out how you can be a part of Canada's fastest-growing sports talk show, The Rod Peterson Show. How about that? We are back live. And before we uh, jump in more with Perry Shockey, a Thursday sports update in a game that was originally scheduled to play on Sunday, the Moose Jaw Warriors skated into Regina, took a 2-1 victory off the pass at the Brand Center Wednesday night. Jagger Ferkus and Braden Yager tallied the Warriors' goals. Connor Bedard had one assist for the Pats. In Red Deer, Kai Uchaz led the way with two goals as the Red Deer Rebels went to 11-0. They beat Victoria 6-2. And in Swifty, Sam McGinley scored the eventual winner as Swift Curran held off a Lethbridge comeback. Broncos won 5-4 in the Iplex. And uh, there you go. This sports update for our friends at Edo Japan. Their fast and friendly service plus online ordering options are easy and convenient when you're on the go. Okay, if we can bring back in Perry Shockey. We did lose internet for a while, but we got it back. I don't know what's going on here, but Shocks, you mentioned... You understand we're airing across all 10 provinces and 31 states and on the radio in Atlanta. He said, can we talk some WHL? Of course, it's my favorite league. What would you like to say about it before we move back to the National Hockey League? Well, I think it's, it's important that people get it back out and start watching the games. I mean, it's great hockey. It's an opportunity to see kids of the future that are probably going to be in the National Hockey League. And I think the work ethic and... Uh, there's just an excitement that you get out of guys that are still, you know, finding their way to their dream. And uh, I think since COVID, I think a lot of the rinks are short on people. People found other things to do with their money. I think, I think recreation vehicles got bought up. You couldn't even buy anything. So a lot of people have probably spent that income on something else now. But hopefully they'll come back and start watching the games. Well, I was sent photos from the rink in Regina last night and there's nobody there. When you were, there was more for intra-squad games when you coached there than there was in the Brand Center last night for Regina Moose Jaw, Connor Bedard. Is that right? You say people bought wrecked vehicles, RVs, and trucks, and what? They did, and boats. They decided where to put their money. Yeah. Well, and the thing is, you got to figure out a way to get back, uh, get those people back, and whatever incentives. I think, you know, when we were in Regina, I remember there was a great idea for an incentive to, you know, bring more people into the building, and the people in charge at that time just scoffed at it and you know I think it would have really built a deep foundation of people being able to get an arena where they could afford it or you know disperse paying for it over time you know so I don't know what exactly it is but uh, I just noticed that there's you know the, the attendance is way down you might get a specific night where you might get right. a few extra yeah in some leagues I'll say we are seeing what you get at the league level or some team level where you have people in charge that don't know what they're doing. That's all that I'll say. But I don't want to sit and talk about empty rinks. The NHL facilities in this country and most in America are packed. They're full. We're watching the highlights. People are deciding to spend the money there. I don't know what the, why specifically because junior hockey is my favorite brand, but I go to the NHL games too. And we had a writer or a viewer in here, Andrew, wrote in and he said, Montreal Canadiens. They are at Buffalo tonight. What a classic battle that is. Uh, he wants to know your thoughts on the Habs, their front office, and their start. Well, I, I know Pierre Dor Dorian. I, you know, I met him when we were scouting and stuff, and I think he's very logical about what he's doing. I think he's, he's got a plan. He wants to stick Ottawa. with Ottawa. Yeah, with Ottawa. Yeah, oh, I was in Montreal. Ottawa. Sorry, yeah. Ken Hughes uh, is well, the gentleman yeah, yeah. there. Mark and I, Saint yeah. Louis. Well, I think... Um, Carey Price, when you lose guys like Carey Price and Shea Weber, like, and I mean, that, those are huge holes. And, you know, now they've got Suzuki coming in and they've got... Um, Cole Caulfield. Yeah, like, and I mean, they're, they're going to be really Josh good players. Anderson. But the fans just have to give them some time. You know, their goaltending is everything is... Goaltending, everybody blames everything on the goalies. It doesn't matter whether it's soccer, whatever. The nice thing about basketball, there's nobody protecting the basket. And lots of times when you go to the basket, you get abused, so... 
Um, you know, you're so right about that. It's goalies, quarterbacks. The thing that always annoyed me is the quarterbacks get all the money. And they should, but I think the goalies should get all the money. And Carey Price in Montreal did. He is worth it at $10.5 million. For sure. And you know, they talk about his demeanor. I remember watching him in Tri-Cities. Like, and they had, they had there's, during that time, they didn't have great teams in front of them. They won games because he just made incredible saves. And then, but, you know, his style was a little bit different than what the norm was. So I loved the guy. I thought he was outstanding. But, uh, you know, and, and nothing changed when he got the National Hockey League. He's, well, I'm sure he internalized the pressure. You know, and I think that that's what's happened in his life. But you know what the great part is? Is that he went and got help, and sounds like he's doing great. So that's that's the mo- that's the success story. Really. And they're taking it very slowly, which I am an advocate of. You can't rush these things. Yeah. And, and by the way, he needs to get every building block of his life straight before he goes on the ice. And it looks like he is. Yeah. So. Well, they're. I think that both him and Weber, they talk about how the injuries that they suffered during the playoffs, the year they took the run. Those guys were playing hurt, and I'm. It sounds like when they were playing hurt, they compromised the, you know, probably their their recovery, to to heal. And when you get older, it's harder to heal. So you know, maybe over time, because I mean, there were two great hockey players. I remember Shea Weber playing in Kelowna, and you know, he was like he was just controlled a, games. Yeah. yeah. Then you know, he played for Habby. Mark Habscheid was coaching, and Habby was a defensive. So he never put up big numbers. And that's because he was reined back. They, you know, he had the bit in his mouth, and they were jerking it on him a little bit. But once he got to the National Hockey League a little more, then you got to see the, the upside of what he had, especially his size. He's just a beast. Okay, what's well, funny, talk about all these things. You were long gone from Regina by the time Ryan Getzlaff was tearing it up with Calgary, although you were in Moose Town that time, and uh, Dion Phaneuf was with Red Deer. And I remember calling those Pats games, and we were awful. And I'm like, this isn't even fair. These guys should be in the National Hockey League. I it must have been a lockout then or something why they were playing in the dub, because it wasn't fair. But you're talking about Weber with Kelowna. They just controlled games. There are players like that now. I had a Pat staffer text me last night. He said, it's bomb for Bedard. Remember it. Bomb for Bedard. But you can't tank, and nobody's going to tank. Yes. Do, they, do they tank in the NHL? Well, I, don't know how you here's, I think you I don't think they tank early in the year. I think when you get down, and here's here's an example: the one year with LA. You know, we were we were postured for a certain spot that we want. You know, and uh, they brought in a bunch of young guys to see how they could play. You disguise it. Then. Well, it was for the draft. It was basically for the draft. You know, like we weren't going to make the. You know, you were going to be postured. So it was like, and I remember it was Jared Smithson and guys came up from Manchester. Lights out. Those guys won games that you know it wasn't supposed to happen. No, it wasn't supposed to happen. But you know, and probably you go from picking 12th to picking 17th, you know, sort of thing. But um, I think I think you. I mean, the logic is is you know where where does it all fit in for you, and you know where do you want to be in in the process. It's odd that we would sit and talk about this, but that's fine. And we do air on. Oh, we're going to take a break here. But when we come back. We air across BC on Telesoptic te- Television, Channel 924. At Shocks Cable down there in Lethbridge. That's where he discovered us. There are those that think that the NHL, <clears throat> Bettman, will screw the Canucks out of getting Bedard and, and the draft lottery will be rigged because they want him in Arizona. That's what they're saying already. So we'll talk about that and whatever comes up next in a viewer takeover. We're live from the Great Eagle Resort and Casino on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to The Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash The Rod Peterson Show now. How about that? Hell yes. Text 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. Pick up your phone and text RP. That's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033. Golf, Hawaii, and the Four Seasons. Imagine picking up your clubs and feeling like a pro for one whole week in paradise. Well, you can get that chance this December with five-star accommodations, a three-day tournament at a championship course, and loads of VIP experiences. The Pro Leisure Golf Tour is going to make you feel like a pro, even if your golf game doesn't. 
So whether you're looking to grab your golfing buddies for a tropical getaway, or just wanting to find an exclusive VIP experience to take part in, the PLGT is perfect for you. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes through our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard, and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Does this look familiar? Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks and make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital GMC, making back to busy easy. Imagine. We're back live from Gray Eagle Resort and Casino, talking hockey in hour one. I'll tell you that we're going to talk football in hour two if Mike Abu Meshrick shows up. But the way this day's going, he's probably stuck in traffic somewhere or a blizzard. I don't know. But uh, Perry Shockey's here. I just want to say hey to the big peach. Our guy Ryan O'Radio, check it in from Metro Atlanta. Noonan, Georgia says, good day all from WQEEFM, the key. Hey, Ryan, hope you're enjoying the hockey talk again. Football talk coming up in hour two. And BW in Edmonton uh, writes in, he says, Arizona got screwed out of the McDavid draft. Doan would have been playing a couple more years as a power forward with Connor McDavid. So the conspiracy is not too far-fetched. If you just tuned in, I don't know why. It seems like my world, everybody's talking about Connor Bedard going number one overall in the NHL draft next summer. He plays for my team, the Regina Pats. And the way it's going, Vancouver would get him if they finished last, the Canucks. They're terrible. But Canucks fans are saying to me, no, nothing goes right for us. And the NHL's going to screw us out of it by some conspiracy. Perry Shockey's saying that's not entirely impossible. Thinking. Well, I think uh, you're, you're talking multi-million dollar business you know and what do you do for your league what what does the league need you know i mean everybody's always felt that they want the nhl the Stanley cup playoffs to be in the united states they don't want to be on this side of the they board. don't want to put a star in canada but they did with mcdavid so how could we but that's say this is a thing they've had multiple number one overall picks. well i don't think you can i don't think they can mess up the the ball you know when they're pulling pulling everything out of the bag there well, the NBA. Said well, they yeah. Well, <laughs> they said that uh, back in the day, I think they were talking about that. With the envelopes. With the, the envelopes. One was frozen. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but 
I mean, I, I believe in that you have to do what's best for the, for the league to keep the league healthy. But I also believe there's such a thing as honesty, and you know, you take your chances on whether or not you get the the ball the ball rolls out, you know, and you get called. So, you know, they say that they've got all these people, the professional people, accounting and all that sort of people that take care of it. But um, I just think that. You know, the situation right now is, is that everybody's scrambling trying to get back, re recovering from COVID. And the sooner the things settle out, the sooner it'll be good for everybody. You know, and there's teams that, you know, like how many teams lost games, you know, couldn't make up games because of... In the were, NHL? Oh, yeah. And, you know, like, I mean, they shut down junior hockey. You think of all those kids in the Western Hockey League who are supposed to be there for their, you know, their inaugural, inaugural year of playing, and then their then their year of the draft, what'd they get? I mean, there's kids that are... Oh, a lot of careers went in the toilet. Nobody well, cares. One but, one. Hello. But there's, there's where the scouting comes in. Is that every... The teams move on. The teams move on and they're saying, hey, you know, we've got a 16-year-old that's now 19-year-old and we're going to develop a 16-year-old. We're going to trade the 19-year-old. That 19-year-old has a window of opportunity to go there and get, try to get signed as a free agent. If they pack up their tack and go home and say, you know, oh, what was me? Well, oh, what was you? Oh, there's still an opportunity. Yeah. No, I agree. My mind is still stuck on integrity of the game. And you're not dissuading me oh, I'm from not fearing to. that this lottery could be rigged in the National Hockey League because the NHL wants but art in the States. Because Tim Peel got fired a couple of years ago, the referee for, for, you know why he got fired? Yeah, yeah. Evening up calls in a game Peel? and he got caught for it. Tim Peel. And the NHL says, we need to protect the integrity of the game. There is no integrity. I, so I, what are you doing? I was, uh, actually, I was talking with Brad Meyer. And, Oscar. And, and, and Tom Cowell. TK. Yeah, I, was, I ran into them and left. Two each. referees. And, and what's his name? Uh, oh, trying to think of his last name. Doesn't matter. Continue. Anyhow, long story short. You know, we were talking about situations that happen in the game. And, you know, they're human and they can make mistakes. You know, like everybody makes mistakes. And it seems like somebody gets a free pass and some guys don't. And I think if you're going to give free passes to certain people, you got to give them to other people. You know, a hockey player can make a mistake and somehow they find a way for that it doesn't compromise the integrity. When you coached, were there two sets of rules? Did I, when I coached, there was? Oh, for sure. I think that's one reason why I wasn't coaching. You know, <laughs> just I, ask it. No, for sure. And I, and I knew that. I, I would address situations with players and be in conflict with even the managers or general managers. Last minute play. Mm -hmm. You know, but at the end of the day, the most important part is, you know, what's best for every player to have an equal opportunity. The Hockey Club podcast watching in Tallahassee, Florida. Corey Patterson says, honesty always prevails. We all got to face the big man one day. Well, I want to believe that. Don't tell me this draft lottery's rigged. I might have to stop watching. Three, six, nine, ten games in the NHL tonight is the one you'll be watching closer than others. We have 30 seconds here. What's that again? There are 10 games in the NHL tonight. Is the one more important than others to you? I watch. I, I try to watch the watch team. Them. I like, watch certain teams when they play against one another. Like Colorado playing Vegas or... You know, I want to, like when Calgary was playing Vegas, that was one of the best games. They'll all be good. All right, Shocks, thanks for coming down. Enjoy the hockey talk. My pleasure. May see him in hour two. We'll be right back on Game Plus and WQEE. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on, on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. Does this look familiar? 
Your fans deserve an incredible arena experience. It's time for an upgrade. Stunning graphics. Revenue opportunities are just the beginning with our in-venue display systems and scoring technology. Let us help you find the best solution for your facility. DDG, always delivering the best fan experience. Find us at ddgregina.com. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. Experts in all residential and commercial plumbing services and proudly serving Regina and area since 1978. Bronco Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling. We'll treat you right. Time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. Nestled in the scenic Quapel Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. If Bo Levi Mitchell is up for trades next year, what team takes him or does he retire? He's not going to be traded. He's a free agent. He'll sign wherever he wants. Rumor is in SAS. Bo Levi Mitchell was looking at houses in the Queen City uh, on the weekend, Jeff. Jeff just shook his head. You know what Ron Lancaster said, the little general? In Regina, if they haven't heard a rumor by noon, start one. This is the Rod Peterson Show. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the RP Show. Hour two is at hand of your favorite daytime sports talk show. Uh, we've got some new friends, some old friends, some friends we haven't seen in a while joining us down here at Great Eagle Resort and Casino today, and it's been great. I need to retrain you, however, so listen up for what we're doing here. Perry Shockey was with us last hour, longtime LA King scout and uh, coach of the Warriors, Pats, and Hurricanes. And just to read some comments from our one, Ted and Red Deer says, what a fantastic hockey discussion. Love it. From my cousin Christine in Medicine Hat. Who will win the Battle of Alberta Saturday night? Well, the smart ass in me would say the team that scores more goals, Chris. But I won't be the smart one. Just Flames Waters. Tune in. I'll be there. Should be a lot of fun on CBC. And Kevin in Airdrie, Kevin the Medium says, before I pass on, please let the Vancouver Canucks win <laughs> a Stanley Cup and uh, from Rick Hagland he says Perry Shockey coached the Regina Pats very well what years were they they were 97 close to 99 and then he got fired like we all get fired by those people uh, so 97 to 99 how about that and here we are reconnecting 20 some years later but I need to retrain you you can bring on the camera here Mike Abu Meshrick joins us 10 year CFL veteran University of Western Ontario Hall of Fame. I'm getting it all out of the way now. Not a Hall of Fame. But get the teams in the Hall of Fame, though. So that puts you in the Hall of Fame. Correct? Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. So I hang let's that, get with it. I hang that plaque in my bathroom. Hour one was hockey. And WQEE Rhino Radio's written us from Metro Atlanta said he loved the hockey talk. I hope you really loved it. 
because we covered everything. But now we're moving to football, okay, for this next hour. National Football League, Canadian Football League, college football, there are three games tonight, university football in Canada, whatever. So hockey hour one, football hour two. Okay? Wait a minute. What Kay. was that? What was that? Hockey hour one. And then football hour two. Okay, good. I got here on time. <laughs> how about that? Funny how that worked. Uh, I like skating. That's about as far as I'll go with the hockey Honestly, talk. we have a heck of a lot of fun playing outdoor hockey, don't we? Did you show up to talk hockey for an hour? <laughs> I'll, I'll play shinny with you any day. <laughs> okay, it was fun. It was fun. I can, we I, ended up in the newspaper. I don't need to stop. I can just go. Right. Okay, so here we go. Hockey hour one, football hour two. This is hour two. Are we clear? So, NFL tonight. Can we start with the National Football League? We are. We have... Big ties to the NBA, Miami, Atlanta, and Toronto. Big ties to the NFL. Half the year we're hosted out of Miami, and we are in Atlanta. So we're big in uh, those NFL markets. But there's one game tonight, Baltimore, Tampa. Bucks favored by 1.5 at Raymond James Stadium. Are you taking the deal? Buccaneers by 1.5? No! Why not? The kids asked me how old Tom Brady was, and I said, he's a year younger than me. I know. Period. <laughs> Done. I, End of actually, discussion. I think your Wikipedia says you're 47. I looked that up today. Yeah. So he's two years younger. That can't be right. But yeah, well, I've had my birthday and he hasn't. He's, uh, he's one, and we're talking football years. I'm one draft year before his Football was. years, yeah. that's a good Yeah, term. it's like dog years, right? Yeah. <laughs> is it seven to one like dog years or is it more years? It's ten uh, to one. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. He's got a lot of football uh, years on his body. That's a, yeah. Honestly, when I do see an old football guy... 50s, 60s, I think. Well, he looks good for a football guy because most For don't. a football most, guy, you go one way or another. Right? You can talk about, anyways, yeah. I won't even. Well, go. Craig Smith, our director of scouting, writes in and he says, Great seeing you, Abu. Looking awesome, good, dude. brother. Hope you're doing well. Of course, he's doing well. He's always doing well. Thank yeah. you, Smitty. I, I feel like, uh, you know, a Canadian audience, you know, has been around me, probably sick of me, and the American audience has no idea who I am. That's what my advisors and, said. And is wondering what this, what this... Tell them what that is. So the University of Western Ontario Mustangs ranked number one in Canada right now and hosting the Vanier Cup, which is a national championship on November 26th. Want to go? No. Dang. All right. Well... My travel plans are committed for November 26th, but thanks for course, the Of course, of course they are. Um... Uh, reigning national championship champions, uh, first round by in the playoffs starting this week, and uh, we're going to be, the, be there and go back to back for the first time ever at Western. So good for you, man. That's exciting. Good for you. It is. I'm excited. Uh, my advisors, which do reside in South Florida, have said in Canada they said you will always, always, always be known as the CFL guy, which is great. But they said down here in America, it's whatever you want it to be. I'm yeah. like, ooh, I like the sounds of that. Anyways, from our viewers, Jennifer at the Four Seasons writes in. She says, so can Tom Brady turn it around tonight against Baltimore? I would be wary. Yeah. We'll all be watching, of course, on Amazon Prime and in Canada on TSN. Dawn, the, our Navy friend, says, I think Tom Brady should go on a reconciliation tour. Will he turn things around this Sunday? Well, he's playing tonight, so I don't think he's going to play Sunday. Come on, guys. Let's get with it. And Jennifer says, Ugh, the Packers play the Bills in prime time Sunday night. They either win a tight one or the Pack will get slaughtered. Holy smokes, man. You go into uh, NFL talk and it doesn't stop. Well, hey, if you need a raving, raging, or I'll be a raving reporter for the next uh, Thanksgiving Day game in uh, Detroit, Buffalo. Uh, headed to Detroit on Thursday. That will be fantastic. Oh, man, it's going to be a great weekend, Rod. It'll be really, really good. And that's where I'm going to be, so you know. Are you? Well, in America. America. For U.S. Thanksgiving. They got games there every day. For the next 23 days, there's football games in the States. Ted, watching, one of the viewers writes in and says, back in the day, dirty offensive lineman was kind of a badge of honor. With that in mind, who would Mike rank as the dirtiest offensive lineman he played with or against? This is excluding himself because, frankly, if you do a Google image search for Mike Abu Meshrick, have you? Ever, I'm sure you've done that. I have children. <laughs> no, of himself. It's you getting kicked out of games. You routinely going like this. Well, you I, were pretty dirty. 
Well, I wasn't uh, listed as an offensive line. I was listed as an enforcer, actually. Um, but when I came up in Winnipeg, that's what the, we had the dirtiest O line in the league, and that's how I learned to play football. I didn't know I was being dirty. I thought I was just playing to the whistle and being aggressive. Uh, Brett McNeil is the toughest guy I know. Lumpy, most, lumpy, the most most intense uh, um, guy I know. But um, uh, I played with a guy named Brandon Dyson, and he was a POS. And he was the dirtiest guy I've ever played with. You also played with a guy that killed somebody, but continue. But not on the football field. <laughs> and in the line of work, too. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it takes a different kind of animal to play, uh, play the beautiful game of American football. Would you say who's the dirtiest D lineman you ever played against, could you say? <sighs> like, you want dirty like fun or dirty like I... Uh, there's only two guys. Brand, playing against Benny them. Goods. Benny Goods Is that right? was not a good person. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, hell of a player though. Hell of a player. Yeah, not a good person though. Um, yeah, Dan Goodspeed too. He's pretty. He's pretty dirty up there. He's in Tampa Bay there. So if anyone's listening, Dan Goodspeed, ex Buck, he'd give it to you in the. Yeah, he watches regularly, <laughs> regularly. So, uh, so that we got the bit of the NFL covered. Tomorrow, far more of a football day. And our CEO, Lee Genier, will be with us as we play Deal or No Deal NFL. What is it now? Week seven already in the NFL? But we should talk about the Canadian Football League. We've covered this a little bit yesterday. Uh, Canada's game of the week. We go into a weekend where all the playoff spots have been locked up. It's the final week of the regular season. Yeah. Have you looked at the schedule? Well, Riders are coming to town. We're going to meet up with Luke probably this weekend. And uh, Riders coming to Calgary. Probably check out that game. Uh, it's a nothing game, so may not stay to the end. But, um, you know, go out there and support the boys for one last time, if you know what I mean. Yeah, open and shut case. That's what you're saying? I think they got a clean house. I mean, I love, love Jeremy. Love, uh, but... Uh, um, okay, stop. Sports is sports. There's a lot of people who, who don't know who you are or what you're talking about. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders close out week 21 at the Calgary Stampede Saturday night. Saskatchewan's missing the playoffs. Calgary's going to the playoffs. The state of the quarterback room is in flux in both places. So I'm just setting the table here. And Mike played with the Rough Riders and won a great cup in 2007. Can I speak to the O-line or are we speaking to the Absolutely. You All right. Can. Love Jeremy. Loved what he did. But I think I kind of tainted him. When they brought me in, they realized. He's talking oh, about Jeremy O'Day, Jeremy the, general the general manager of the Saskatchewan football yes, Sorry. Club. Yes. Um, anyways, they, have, they don't really have an offensive line. And, and you can get away with one hole in an offensive line and, bring a, and put a young junior football player in there and, and develop him and stuff like that. But you can't have three. There's nobody there for them to, to learn from. There's no one there for them to lean on when, not if the time gets, going, gets rough, but when the time gets, there's no one there for them to lean on, to be like, just cool it out, kid. And so, I mean, Cody Fajardo, the quarterback, I mean, he's a good quarterback, not great, good quarterback, that was getting hit left, right, and center, having, what, less than one and a half seconds to throw the ball. Um, you see in ghosts. So, you need to move on, clean the slate, start over. And, and to be fair to J Jeremy and, and, and the brass there, this Grey Cup was supposed to be in Regina two years ago. They were supposed to be hosting the Grey Cup two years ago. That's when they built the team to win. And then COVID came around and, and all the rest of it. So um, victim of circumstance, yeah, but rip the Band-Aid off. Let's start over next year. Bo Levi Mitchell's a great place to start. Is Lee looking for a job as a GM? Maybe we can get him with all well, the work he's going to do. I'm liking it. You took a circuitous route to get to the point. And I kind of like what you're saying, what we, where you finally got to. Our <laughs> GPS took us in two different directions, but we got to the same place. And that is that they missed the playoffs, the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, in the year that they're hosting the national championship. And you're right, they were supposed to host it two years ago, and COVID screwed that all up. But it's this regime's mantra, they've said it a million times. It's 11-11 Mountain, by the way. 1-11 Eastern. That Ooh. tells me that I'm on the right track here with what I'm saying. They want to be sustainable and win a contender every year. So it shouldn't matter that COVID screwed up the plan two years ago because they want to contend every year, and they should be. So the fact that they missed out this year, I'm not buying it. And I don't think you're using it as a defense to, to defend the team. Who do you think or, they are, Calgary? Or... <laughs> Come on, Rod. Good one. But you, you weren't 
set up and told to say that. No, no, no. And, and you know what? You know, going back on social media and seeing what some of the, the Ryder and Canadian fo- uh, Ryder fans are saying, you know, stick with the regime. We got to stick with these guys. You got to stick with it. Um, that's what Calgary does. You know, use them. Uh, yeah, but when you lose the room, when you lose the confidence of everything, maybe, maybe, maybe you've got to start over. You know, if Huff went on a... Uh, I mean, I just can't imagine uh, Huff or the, or the Calgary Stampeders going through up and down seasons. It doesn't happen, right? Um, they finished third and they were mad. Yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> Regina, and uh, maybe this isn't a topic, but, you know, Regina will finish second and be like, yay, we had a good year. So it's just uh, a different perspective, a different way to kind of approach this. Oh, well, okay, so again, it took us a while to get there, but we finally got here. It's a business. To what we're talking about. It's interesting. Jennifer from the Four Seasons writes in. It's very interesting to me. She says, the CFL's over for me. I'll watch the Grey Cup, though, if I'm not sitting in a hockey rink. And you can't tell somebody what they should watch or follow or what they shouldn't. I mean, I'm into different things of what other people are. But there are other CFL markets that are heading into the playoff weekend. She happens to be a Saskatchewan fan, so she's tuned out. Can't blame them. The Blue Jays are out of the world, the playoffs, so people stop paying attention to the World Series, you know. But the Blue Jays, when they went to, hey, look over here. Look at us. We're going to the show. Yeah. Everybody come. Point? People were flying in across the country to go watch a one Blue Jays game. I know. What has the CFL done in the last 30 years to be other than the Rocket Ishmael in 1989? Hey, you, come here and watch my game now. I agree. They, they they don't do that, and we can sit here every year, every day, and say they need to do something. They don't. They don't. Randolph Charles is watching in Toronto and says, from an economic economic standpoint, the best thing for this year's Grey Cup is to have the Rough Riders sit out. I think you couldn't be more wrong. I think the highest grossing Grey Cup ever was 2013. Riders rent it, $97 million. You want to make money, put the riders on anything. You right. want to have a, anything, put a, to- a poll, put it, on, put, it on a, put it in Saskatchewan, have them ask them a question. Um, yeah. So from the viewers, uh, John in Winnipeg says, Mike Abumetric, what happens with Bo Levi Mitchell? Any ideas, hunches? And just stop for one sec from Todd Pinckney of you. He says, no more questions about Bo. Ben Hebert clarified it all yesterday, and I will trust him over anyone else. To the U.S. viewers, Bo is the two-time league champion, uh, MVP and champion. He's going to free agency. Going to Hall of Fame, too. And his very best friend was down here yesterday, Ben Hebert, and says he thinks he's going to Sask. And when we got off the air, he's like, I wish I could tell you even more. There's more, but all I can say is he's done here probably going to Sask. Uh, In other breaking news, the sky is blue. Right. You you go to Hall of Fame quarterback as a backup. He needs to go to another team. Name another team that needs a quarterback and is willing to back up the Brinks track because they want to win every year, right? It's a no-brainer. You're saying to Sask. No, no, no (laughs) brainer. How Give more him a clearly contract, could he but, say? But even before the GM. If, uh, you know, usually you want your GM before you start adding players, but any GM would do it. Uh, the, the GM that wouldn't bring Bo Levi Mitchell in shouldn't be a GM. So I think it's a no-brainer. You're right. Let's stop talking about it and move on. I didn't say that. I'll talk about it for days. I'm a little surprised that they're not talking about it more in Calgary. Look, you live here. It's obvious. And what do you hear about Stampeders? I live both places, and I hear... Uh, not much, not as not compared to Regina. It's all it is in Regina. Uh, yeah. We will pause and continue on this. Fans, I can tell, want to talk NFL, CFL. Lee Genier will be back a little later. We're live from the Great Eagle Resort and Casino, and we are in one on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, your favorite podcast platform, and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Text 902-518-3033. 902-518-3033. Pick up your phone and text RP. That's Rod Peterson. Text 902-518-3033.
Hawaii and the Four Seasons. Imagine picking up your clubs and feeling like a pro for one whole week in paradise. Well, you can get that chance this December with five-star accommodations, a three-day tournament at a championship course, and loads of VIP experiences. The Pro Leisure Golf Tour is going to make you feel like a pro, even if your golf game doesn't. So whether you're looking to grab your golfing buddies for a tropical getaway, or just wanting to find an exclusive VIP experience to take part in, the PLGT is perfect for you. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital GMC. Reserve your brand new truck or SUV today. Check out our great selection of in-stock GM certified pre-owned trucks. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any make or model. Capital GMC, making back to busy easy. Easy snacking all around. Something everyone can love. Universal Collision Center is Saskatchewan's premier auto body shop. Our extensive process ensures that every vehicle that comes to our state-of-the-art facilities is returned pre-accident condition and that every UCC customer experience is an easy one. We're certified to repair all makes, all models, and all luxury brands, and Universal Auto Spa offers full-service detailing packages to suit you and your vehicle. Plus, we're the official body shop of your Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Universal Collision Center, 3910 Rochdale Boulevard and 2355 First Avenue in Regina. Is it time to take your event online? Bring it to IKS Live. We've got a fully customized virtual event platform with remote guest support for your next fundraiser, talk show, conference, performance, and more. IKS Live offers live streaming to Facebook Live and YouTube and pre-recorded capabilities, both in our studio with green screen available and on location with pre-production and post-production services. Visit us at ikslive.ca. And we're live, and yes, at Great Eagle Resort and Casino. I caught your joke earlier, Mike Abu Meshrik. Our producer, Jordan, just said in my ear, mics are hot. Can you put them on the... I know you're... Can you put Mike on as soon as possible? He said, thank you. Mics are hot. Yeah. You think Jordan's saying you're hot? I know, not nothing That's I That's the kind before. of friends I have. I heard that before. I look even better when I'm next to you. <laughs> this is... See, this is the life I lead. So <clears throat> I'm just checking the comments here. It's been it's been an interesting day. Hockey hour one, football hour two. You mentioned well Tampa Bay tonight, Thursday night football, Amazon Prime, Baltimore Ravens at the Buccaneers. Bucks favored by one point five. You said your son, who is a burgeoning soccer goaltender. Yes, he's lucky Calgary to have Foothills. your frame in a way. When you say, well, he's, to be yeah. a goalie. Yeah, he's got a very big wing radius. Yeah. Yes, but you said NFL's his deal. Yeah, he loves he loves the he, he loves the NFL. I mean, it's our, just what I said the first segment about the CFL didn't do. That's what the NFL does do. Hey, look at us over here. Come and watch us. Look at our dancing robots. Look at our cheerleaders. Look at our dun da da da. It's just bang in your face. It's the American marketing machine. It grabs you and and, and makes you to makes you watch. You know, even. Uh, I love the NFL having all their games at the same time because uh, I love football, but it's a kind of a boring sport if you just sit there and watch a game. You know, four seconds, pause for 45 seconds. Four seconds for NFL, red zone, back and forth, watching this game, watching that game. Look at this. Here's a highlight. Look at this guy run. Look at that guy run. They really do a good job marketing the, marketing the game for everybody, not just young kids. Well, Abu said he's going to come to South Florida and hang out, and you have the, out, the uh, open invite to do that. There's a Thank lot you. of things to do. Yes. And going to a Dolphins game or a Bucks game, it's, it's life-changing. Well, we went to a Bucks game a couple years ago, and that was, life oh. that was life-changing for another reason. But <laughs> I digress. Ever? <laughs> I was showing somebody a photo of that the other day when you were wearing the... Like Saudi, what do you call it? I don't know. I just gotten divorced, so yeah, there you, you were go. going through something I, like that week, I think. You were, <laughs> yeah. 
it was a very tight schedule. Can I say, tell a story? I was hosting a show like this at Hulk Hogan's. True story. You were there. The highlight of my life, and maybe. Somebody, yes, it was so <laughs> great. Hulk Hogan's. I was doing a show from Hulk Hogan's. And a guy ran up to me, tugged me on the arm, and he goes, Abu is out in the Gulf of Mexico, and he just dropped his shorts. And I said, I didn't see it, so it didn't happen. He goes, I'm telling you what happened. I said, I didn't see it, so it didn't happen. <laughs> Can I get happened. back to do Didn't happen. Thanks for telling me, though. Uh, from Craig Smith, our director of scouting. Greg, great way to put it. American marketing machine. Uh, I'm trying to get through as many comments as I can before Abu leaves because Lee Genier is coming up here. There's too many to keep straight. Keep this in your mind for one second. John in Edmonton says, Mike and Rod, what does the CFL need to do to attract the younger generation out of Canadians who watch the NFL and not the CFL? And he says, what does TSN need to do to attract more people to the CFL? We'll park that for a second, mindful of the fact we are on the radio in Atlanta. But we're, I want your take on this story that's hitting the news now. CTV picked it up. We're less than an, a month away from the Grey Cup, and they, that's Canada's Super Bowl. They have not announced a halftime musical act. How do you feel about that? I think we covered that in the first with uh, let's just get rid of everyone and start over. In the CFL? Well, with the Riders. Uh, with the writers, this comes uh, they, the, as their planning, their management team, and it's three weeks, two weeks away, and we don't know who it's... Some people come to the Grey Cup just to see the, the, the show. And, and uh, a couple days ago, as a joke, it came out that the Wiggles were... were for, and I believed it because <laughs> I'm sure at this point... I was for a second, I did too. I mean, in sports, you plan ahead. I got a meeting with my son's soccer coach that says he hasn't made up his mind yet. Bull baloney. Coaches know before the season begins what the, what the thing is. Teams got to be the same way. You've got to plan it all the way out. Things don't work out the way you plan them to, but you have to have a plan. For them not to have a plan for, for I mean, it, it speaks volumes to... What's going on. The, what's, what's going to what's on. Going on. Yeah, uh, yeah. From Muffs, Muffs is the guy's name watching. He says, the NFL is just as boring. That's why you have the skip button perfectly timed. Right, and, that, and that's what I'm saying. The marketing of the NFL, they know their game. They know that it's a boring game. Excuse me, you know that I love it, but it's a boring it's not game. exciting. P hand the ball a guy to a guy. Two seconds later, he falls down. A bunch of fat guys land on him. They get, uh, this, that's my dad. He's Lebanese. He, had, he thought I was playing soccer. He goes, what the hell is this? <laughs> they give the guy a ball. A bunch of fat guys jump on him, and then they all get up and they talk about it. What are they talking about? You know, it's, it's uh, odd, it, it, but it works. The NFL is successful because they're everywhere. Chess is boring if you were watching chess, right? But that's what NFL is more like a chess game than a than a basketball game, right? You 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 think about your strategy, you do it. It's not free flowing. NBA all the time. nonstop action. Yeah, and hockey too. I prefer uh, that. and soccer too. I mean, you, I prefer that you know where you rely more on the athlete's ability and uh, to to show to showcase the athlete's ability rather than only just the strategy not to say that there's not strategy in every game well and so from our director of scouting craig smith thanks for watching smitty he says hulk hogan's great bar on the water good food too see that's the, when i say we're at hulk hogan's it was a bar not his house but every time i was in tampa which i never thought i'd ever get to tampa when goody the guy you mentioned earlier dead in good speed when he left saskatchewan he goes if you're ever in tampa look me up and i'm like like i'll ever be in tampa now I'm there all the time. The temp? Yeah, and he came and met me there, but at Hulk Hogan's. So I went up to a cop one time. This patrol car was parked in front of Hulk Hogan's, and he's just standing there. And he said, hey, have you seen his, my buddy Mike? With his hand on his gun. Yeah, he's in the Gulf of Mexico without his shorts on. I said, why, why, why are you here? I said to the police officer. He goes, we get called so many times that we just finally just stationed somebody here. But Because but, yeah. it's a wild place. It's not even open anymore. It's not? No. You know what? I'll say about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers beers. They treat their, the riders too, but the Tampa Bay and Bombers, but the, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers treat their alumni like first class gold. And it ever. doesn't matter if you're Mike Allstott or. Mike Abumesh. Right. Or uh, if, if you play. Dan Goodspeed. Right. Goodspeed's a, I mean. He's a hero out there. I think he, he played H back for a season and a half. Back you know? up. Yeah. Like, uh, but he won a Super Bowl. 
Yes, he's. I mean, that means something. He's always out there on the on the I, waving, he's told me signing every autographs. Fifth game, he's the featured alumni. Because yeah, he's... they treat him like gold. Because yeah. I guess I guess uh, when you have a team that isn't historically great, you don't have a lot of alumni sticking around. Well, here's Smitty. He says, "I went to Hogan's because of you." Thank you, Smitty. That's advertising works. And by the way, the mouth of the South. Did you meet the mouth of the South, Jimmy Hart? Because oh, he yeah. was there. I, I just, think we might have like gotten married or something. I just know you. I don't remember it, but. You were busy. Listen, do you want to hear stories? I got a million. We went there on a Friday. Figuratively burned it to the ground. On Friday. True story. You were there. Lost my phone. Lost everything. Passport. Lost your dignity. Everything. I was still drinking then. Came back Monday to do a show. You were there with David Black. Yeah. And who else? Blackie. There was another uh, Lumpy. Course. Brett McNeil. Of course. And Jimmy Hart, the mouth of the South, <laughs> came out. He made a beeline for me. He's the manager of the bar. And I'm like, I'm sorry, Mr. I'm sorry what happened here the other night. And he goes, what do you, what do you mean, sorry? I said, well, I heard that some of our people jumped on your security guard's backs. I heard somebody left in a wheelchair. People were peeing in the bushes. He's like, yeah. You know, right? I said, I'm sorry for that. And he goes... Your people were tipping a hundred dollars around. You guys can come back anytime. There, there was true story. There was, there was three people on our trip that didn't like what everyone was doing and pointed at me. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I was doing that, but so was everyone else, right? It was a great time, great time. So I'll see you in South Florida in a couple of weeks. Jimmy Hart, mouth of the South. He was on the show. I got photos of it. Uh, where was I? We were trying to talk about sports. We were trying, and Jimmy Hart and Hulk Hogan came up. I haven't thought about that in a long time. I don't even know where to start now. My mind's blown. How about Aaron Rodgers? Is he going to come? Is he, does he have the Tom Brady thing? Like, all these guys are playing older and older. Brady you know what? These guys are playing older and older and older and older, and it's great because of nutrition and, and sleep habits and just awareness of science. But... You have this little tendon in your arm. <laughs> and some have them stronger than others to throw the ball more with more accuracy and everything. And, and sometimes, let's put it this way. I was walking into the casino. I, put, I, I planted my foot down left to go right. Boom! Gone. Gone. No knee. <laughs> well, 47. Tom Brady is 45 and a half. Um, How old is Aaron Rodgers? Stop it. It's science. I, 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 I've got Aaron Rodgers in my, in my pool. I hope he does well this year. But I think it's time to let the young guys. The game's changing, too. Remember when you said goodbye to your career, you were pretty upset. Yeah. Right? And I just wonder, what, how old were you? You weren't that old. 32, 33? 33. Yeah. What's Aaron Rodgers? Is he 40 yet? He's, I think he's right. I think he's right shy of 40, on the other side of 40. What more does a guy like that have to prove? Like... And well, how many just walk away well, you into know, the sunset? Not that many. Kathy, my ex-wife, and I actually talked about this because my son's going through the same thing. He's 13. Like, do we transition him away from soccer and put him into football? That's your, ide- that's your identity, right? That's who you are. Yeah. I mean, I used to say, I'm not a football player. I'm a son and a husband and a dad and a hundred other things. But you've been playing that game since you were, was before you had hair on your chest. Peaches. Right. Like, that is who you are. Whether you like it, you're not, that is, like it or not, that is who you identify yourself with. And when it's gone, it's, uh, I mean, that's why 80% of the guys, you know, three, four years after are bankrupt, divorced, or, or worse, right? Is because you don't, you're an alpha male. You, I mean, this is private, and I know you feel it sometimes too. I mean, you're the best at what you do. Everyone comes and watches you and always tells you how good at you, you are. And you're great, and you're the best, and yeah. And then... You don't do anything and you suck at everything because you never had to do anything else. It's hard. I work it's very with hard. so many athletes post-career because it's very hard for them. And, uh, and that's sees- why they cover, call me a certified recovery coach because the definition of recovery is to restore something to its original state. Remember who you were before football? Let's get back to that guy. Or hockey. Dude, or... I mean, I'll, if you want to talk real, who, do, who was I before football? I was that guy that the, at the parties, that, at the keg party that drank. 
And we know both before know how. Before football? Or, well, yeah. before I identified myself as a professional football player. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you go back and you do some things that, you know, you can do when you're, you know, 18, 19. In Canada, we can do it at 18, 19. Uh, tw in your early 20s, and you shouldn't be doing in your mid-30s and 40s. From Kevin the Medium, he says, where else, what other sports talk show would we hear this kind of stuff? None. That's why we're growing, and they're all shrinking. Randy from Winnipeg says, the nature boy was at the Raptors game last Woo! night. Woo! It's like every team lays claim to him. The Florida Panthers, have a, they play him on the big screen. Well, he's the greatest. No, he's not. No, that's Muhammad Ali. Actually, that's what I call You've my... You've got more great cups than Muhammad Ali. I do. It's a fact, Jack. <laughs> I've tied with rushing yards from Muhammad Ali in the NFL as well. Um, yeah, actually, I call my associates uh, 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 Muhammad and Wayne because they're so great. The great one, the greatest. Anyways. Randolph and Tirana says, Aaron and Trent... Dil, uh, Trent Dilfer are tied in Super Bowl wins at one. That's why Aaron plays on. But then he's going to have to be told, at some point, Aaron, you're done. And it might be this year. The Packers clearly aren't the same team. You're hearing a lot about, are they done? And it's starting. They got the Bills Sunday? It, that could get ugly. If guys, I'm, I'm a money guy, you know that. If, if, if guys really wanted to win championships, Tom Brady... You would take a hell of a lot less. You'd only get paid $5 million instead of $80 million a year. You can't do it. If you make $5 million a year or $6 million a year, same thing. Doesn't matter. Well, unless you want to be a bit weird. Tom Brady takes less money. That's why he's, you know. I know. That's why he has guys around him. And he still him. puts up with all this crap. And, and, look, and, look at, uh, and look at Aaron Rodgers. He just took the biggest, uh, he took the biggest bite as he, he could out of, the, out of their wallet. And now the best receiver is playing in, in Oakland instead of, or um, Vegas instead of He's Green losing. Bay. Yeah. We have to run. This has been great. Do you have a great yes. cup pick who's going to be in it? Oh, my Bombers. And? Whoever loses Your to the Bombers. Your hometown, Toronto? Oh, they, Toronto can kiss the backside of. <laughs> Don't say that. We're on the air. Let's go we Hamilton. didn't mean that, Ham Toronto. Hamilton. Oh, we did. What okay. I did I mean. Uh, don't tell me what I think. Uh, okay. Yeah, Hamilton's looking really good. They're Hamilton, looking really good. Hamilton, Winnipeg, you heard it here. For a third Again. straight year, I'm not sure that's a good thing. Thanks, Abu. Love it. Lee Jenye in next. It's the RP Show on Game Plus TV, YouTube Live, and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to YouTube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Nestled in the scenic Coppell Valley, just 20 minutes northwest of Regina, is one of the finest golf courses in all of Saskatchewan, the Deer Valley Golf Club. The clubhouse has a full-service restaurant, and customers can enjoy a casual dining experience with spectacular views of the golf course and valley. A fully stocked golf shop staffed by PGA of Canada professionals is equipped to meet all of your golf apparel and equipment needs. Book your tee time, family event, or corporate tournament today at the Deer Valley Golf Club. Call 306-731-1445.
people donate blood for moments like this. But there are lots of reasons why Canada's lifeline needs donors every day. Like the fact that someone with leukemia can eat up to eight units of blood a week. Or that donated blood lasts no longer than 42 days. Or to help new moms and babies, like Henry. There's lots of reasons to donate blood. That's why we need donors every day. The need for blood is constant. Join Toyota and our Toyota dealers in supporting Canada's lifeline. I gotta hit the beat. Dark Horse Bets today. Beat. I gotta hit the beat. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. What a day, what a day. Before we get back going with Lee Genye, a sports update. The Ottawa Senators shoot for their fifth win in seven games as they host the Minnesota Wild tonight. The Sens are led by Captain Brady Kachuk, who's off to a hot start with five goals and five assists in six contests. Elsewhere tonight, Montreal is in Buffalo. Edmonton visits Chicago. Winnipeg's at L.A. Toronto's road trip continues in San Jose and Vancouver visits Seattle. The undefeated Philadelphia Eagles have acquired three-time Pro Bowl defensive end Robert Quinn from the Chicago Bears. Chicago gets a fourth-round pick in 2023 in return. Thursday night football, it is the Baltimore Ravens at Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Amazon Prime has it in uh, the States. TSN in Canada. Denver Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson has proclaimed himself ready to roll despite a lingering hamstring injury ahead of Sunday's game against the Jaguars at Wembley Stadium in London. Russell was a limited participant at practice yesterday and was held out of Sunday's 16-9 loss to the Jets. We're not done talking about Russell Wilson and all the hullabaloo has come out of the flight. We can bring Lee in here now. And Catter, get used to that. Catter, because everybody's saying Qatar, but it's Catter. You've been there. I've been there. Yeah, they do they get upset if you need, say the name of it wrong? Well, I mean, you're just used to them saying it that way, and over here we call it Qatar. But, hey, well, once you lo- use the... It's like when I grew up and came here to college, I'm like, Calgary. It's great to live in Calgary. It's not Calgary, right? It's Calgary. It's one word. Right? See, there's a lot of If you're from here. Saskatchewan, it's Calgary. You're Mark Co- yeah, <laughs> if you're from Sask, it's Calgary. Or if you're Mark Cohan, the former commissioner of the CFL, it's Saskatchewan. Everybody from Eastern Canada. No, Mark, it's Saskatchewan, Hmm. like we did with the Grey Cup last year. That's what I said to him. Um, Anyways, Catter says it will drop most of its coronavirus restrictions beginning November 1st, just before it hosts the 2022 World Cup. Catter's health ministry has announced COVID test results would not be required for those flying into the country. The country also dropped a requirement to register for the country's contract tracing app. I think they meant contact tracing. What a pain in the butt that was. Just a little bit. I literally don't even think about it anymore. Do you? Uh, I try not to think about it because it was a nightmare yeah you said a nice word there way to dress that up but i was doing that banquet the other night with Stu grimson and i reached in my suit pocket and i pulled out a mask i'm like oh that's where that is i paid a lot of money for it It it's from bauer a hockey equipment company i'm like why that's the last time i wore this suit i had to wear a mask and i don't know why i was wearing it probably going to a florida panthers game or something but anyways this sports update is for ballers rec room your official home of slow pitch Open Wednesday to Sunday for the Tab Brew House and Drive Through Liquor Store. And for Red Bull Canada, Red Bull gives you wings. I love that my football insiders are watching in Florida. 
One of them's just texted me regarding Aaron Rodgers and why he continues to play. He says, Rod, it's all about money. How long would you play if you were making what Rodgers or Brady was making? I understand for sure most people think that way. But when I got out of the CFL, I was 46. Not like I was making 40 million, but I said, I'm not. I was relieved. I'm going to go do something else. It's that whole gratitude. If you're happy with what you have, you'll always have enough. I think they got enough. Yeah, well. And I'm not trying to put myself in the mindset of an NFL quarterback, but go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, Brady's got a a great broadcasting contract. It's going to pay him more than what he is playing. But you know what? And I think we had a, you know what? We had a great conversation with with an athlete yesterday that said, I'm going to play until I can't play anymore. So, you know, I think that's where his mindset is. That's why I've been following this story so closely because I really want to see how this develops. If I'm Aaron Rodgers, same thing. I mean, he might be having a bit of an off year, but you know what? They are uh, they're professionals. They'll bring it back. And, yeah, if I'm making $40 million, I am staying there as long as I can. Especially in a state that doesn't collect income tax. Um, from Even jo- better. From John in Edmonton says, I hope the Buccaneers can get more than three points tonight and Green Bay can win on Sunday. Here's the thing about Canadian sports fans. They are paying attention to what's going on in the NFL because it's getting pumped down their throats too. It's what's in front of your face. I'll say it again. That's why I worry about the leagues that have lost visibility coming out of COVID because they're really, it's going to take a lot of work to come back if they come back at all. Jeff in Winnipeg says, why is Aaron Rodgers still playing? Cue the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase laugh. Remember that? Ha 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 ha. Everybody's got a price, Mr. Whalen. Wait a minute. That's stampede wrestling but I still know what you mean. Everybody's got a price. Well, and Smitty says they love the game. There's that. Look at John Ryan. You think he needed to punt footballs for 80 grand a year? Super Bowl champion? No, but he lo- again, you love the game, and you're going to keep playing, um, like, again, until you can't play. And I think John, you know, here's a perfect, you know, example is John Ryan said, you know what, I think I kicked as far as I could kick. So, you know what is, um, you know, at some point, these guys will make their decision, and it needs to be their decision, unless it's going to be a coaching decision. Uh, I'm going to stick around as long as I can, right? And um, Most think that way. Most, for uh, sure, and that's the way yeah. it happens. Well, when should. I left the hockey full-time in 2010, it took me two years to get over it. It did. And when I left the CFL... I'm like, I'm not going to wait two years. It only hurt me. I was the only one that it hurt. Nobody else cared. Mm-hmm. And that's why when I left the CFL, I'm like, I'm just going to be happy about this. Enjoy life and enjoy it for what it was and move on. Which reminds me, John in Edmonton writes in and he's, no, oh, you have a point? Well, I know it's, it's kind of what's going on with Bo Levi right now is people in Calgary have written him off, man. He spent 10 years here, all-time passing leader. Man, don't let the door hit you on the way out. It seems to be what the fans are saying here. And the team, hello. And the team. So, hey, sports is an unkind world. Yeah, for sure. And that's exactly what happened to me with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. But let me say this. How great do you think it feels to come back with this? And WQEE and Game Plus Television and Gray Eagle Resort and Casino. As my advisors in Florida have said, you've already surpassed what you amassed as the voice of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. And you're still going. You're just starting. So it feels great. And that's why with Bo, I want to see him shove it down their throat. I really do for anybody. And you've had it happen to you. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I have. I've worked in sports right. for 30 years. You've had years. it happen to you. That's why I'm so glad you're on our team, the Expendables. And the thing is, John Kirby in Edmonton for about the 873rd time, he's written in here and says, today, what does TSN need to do to attract more people to their CFL coverage? John, oh. It's not our problem. It's TSN's problem. And even if we sat here and wasted our time and thought about what they need to do, they wouldn't listen to us anyways. No. We're worried about us. They should be worried about them. And I'm not even sure that they are. But you're watching us. Right. When we come back, I do want to talk about the Grey Cup halftime thing. I can't believe how much fun that discussion is. 
Uh, Craig, in, uh, our director of scouting, Smitty, says, I was in the CFL for 19 years, didn't play, but I sure miss everything about being with a team. I don't. But that's the difference between me and most everybody else. I'll tell you a quick story. We were playing in Fort McMurray, Alberta. Wow, we have Smitty here. And this is getting to where my lot in life was near the end of my time with the Riders. He comes out. I'm sitting and having lunch by myself. We're playing a preseason game against the Argos. I think it was the Argos, Smitty, wasn't it? Well, he, he comes up to the table and he goes, can I sit with you for lunch? And I said, well, Smitty, I don't know if you should. Team members aren't supposed to talk to me. He's like, I don't give a rat's ass what, the, what they say or who's saying, well, I want to have lunch with you. I said, well, sit down. But if you get in trouble, don't say I didn't warn you. He's like, that's Smitty. But that was the way the riders were run at that time and still are. We'll be back with overtime on Game Plus TV and WQEE 99.1 FM. Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now. Snacking all around. Something everyone can love. I gotta hit the beat. I gotta hit the beat. Gotta hit the Dark Horse Bets today. I gotta hit the beat. Some of the challenges we face with the CT technology that we have today is some of the deficiencies in around integration with some of our other systems. The addition of, of two new 40 simulators uh, within the programming of the Saskatchewan Cancer Agency is, is going to have significant impact on on you know, the care we provide to the people of Saskatchewan. And that's a wrap on summer, everyone. Things are about to get back to busy. Work, school, errands, they're all coming back. That's why we make buying easy at Capital Ford Lincoln. We have a great selection of brand new F-150s in stock. Drive it off the lot today. Reserve an incoming unit or pre-order the perfect vehicle for you. And make some cold hard cash by selling us your used vehicle. We pay big and you can skip the hassle of selling privately. Plus, our service department is always here to help with any maker model. Capital Ford Lincoln, making back to busy easy. Easy snacking all around. something everyone can love. Here's how your business can be a part of Canada's fastest growing sports talk show. All you have to do is contact us and we will tell you all about the dynamic and exciting marketing opportunities we have utilizing a fully integrated 360 degree multi-platform. Imagine your business seen and heard across Canada on Game Plus TV and around the world on the Rod Peterson Digital Network. You will use one of the most overused expressions in sports. You gotta be kidding me. Get your business involved. Contact the Rod Peterson Show today. Okay. 
Final segment, we call it overtime. It's brought to you by the Four Seasons Sports Palace, your home for the UFC and the National Football League. I just want to clarify one thing, and I, uh, Lee Jenny is with us, our COO, just talking about uh, this new chapter in our careers, and our director of scouting, Craig Smith, just the best guy, two-time Grey Cup champion, wrote in and said he misses being with the team, and I said, I don't. Uh, and Wayne in Victoria, B.C. writes that, and he says, that's because you're basically a hockey guy, Rod. You don't get it. I don't miss being with the hockey teams either, but I'm over-explaining myself to everyone. Just watch. The only thing that sucks is when you're not with a team, you're responsible for your own travel. So, <laughs> you know, you get that, Lee, right? So me being stranded, storm state. You don't have a pilot to fly you through the storm or a bus driver to drive you through that you're doing it yourself. That's why I've always had so much respect for referees because they travel on their own too. They do. You know, and I respect those guys and gals a ton. Allie in Texas says, I'm glad you ended up where you are, Rod, because I love this show. From Muffs, he says, this is how I discovered Letter Kenny. Wow. Because of us? Wow, how you know? That's, that's yeah. big. Yeah. Well, how you know? What do you mean? You two? This show? I don't understand. Um, Ten games in the NHL tonight. They told us we got a message from Atlanta today that they're loving the hockey talk that we had today. So it's the Montreal Canadiens at Buffalo, Florida at Philly, Minnesota at Ottawa. That might be my featured game to see if the Sens can keep it rolling. Detroit at Boston, St. Louis Blues visit Nashville, Washington's at Dallas, Edmonton Oilers at Chicago, Vancouver Canucks at Seattle. Do they get their first win tonight? The Winnipeg Jets are at the L.A. Kings and the Toronto Maple Leafs are at San Jose. We've covered NFL college football a lot. Or sorry, NFL football a lot. There's three college games in the dub tonight. Vancouver is at Edmonton. How do you... Okay, I got to get out of the comments. My battery's about to die. The Great Cup Halftime Act. Like, I'm trying to be positive with the CFL and not rain in the parade. For those that just tuned in, wherever you may be, they don't... We're less than a month from the championship game we don't have the halftime act announced yet i'm being led to believe that this is by design and they have somebody and this is all by design i don't know um i don't think it's by design whatsoever i mean it, we're three weeks out i mean i've been part of putting on a lot of gray cups you know the halftime act was a big draw just to create some excitement some real excitement you had, you know, whether it was Shania Twain, whether it was Justin Bieber, whether it was the Black Eyed Peas. You use that because fans were coming. I mean, right now, you know, Saskatchewan is out of the Grey Cup. There's not a lot of energy in Saskatchewan right now around the game. So, I mean, you're three weeks out and you're going to make an announcement next week, two weeks out. Um, you know, I just say that is a fumble. A big fumble. And, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of circumstances. They, they said it was all around COVID and booking and bans. Excuses. I, excuses. Uh, Jennifer from the Four Seasons, whom I do miss. I love Jen's smiling face. She says, I can't even remember what I did in the mornings before discovering this show. My coffee tastes better since. I agree, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. We're glad to have you part of the family. Ted and Red Deer, to me, the theme of this show is to do what you love and have fun along the way. And usually oh. learn something as well. And good friends. Look at these guys coming down here today. Obviously, mm -hmm. Lee, who I've known since the 90s. But Mike Abomashrik, Perry Shockey. My brother said to me, we were sitting in a McDonald's in Henderson, Nevada. Ooh, yeah. And my brother Lee says this show's been successful because you never burned a bridge. That's for my brother Lee, the cowboy. And that made me quite proud, actually. But back to that halftime thing for a second. Can you put yourself on the shoes? Number one, who's responsible for it? The Canadian Football League or the Saskatchewan Rough Riders? Which? Or is it 50-50? What? Yeah, well, if I'm the team, I'm pushing the league. Um, I know the now game. Yeah, you've done this before. I've done this before, for sure. And you're pushing the league because, again, you want to create that excitement. Because, again, you, you've lost some huge momentum this last week. Um, but, again, you're going back because you can't guarantee your team's ever going to be in it. So you're going on. It's about the, the Canadiana. It's about the party anyways at this point. So you better get the hype going. And they have. They, but they don't get the hype going about anything. 
So, And I'm sure Danny Austin will be mad at me from the Calgary Sun because he said, he tweeted this morning how embarrassing this is for the CFL that they don't have the announcement of the Halftime Act. I retweeted it and said, be positive about the CFL. Tongue in cheek. If people are writing me back saying, it's hard. It's hard. The Buffalo Sabres are leading our poll, by the way, for Capital Automall Universal Collision Center, and it is, which of these teams is wearing a disguise? i.e. not what their record says that they are. The Buffalo Sabres, who are very good at 4-2. and two. The Anaheim Ducks, who have lost six in a row. The Ottawa Senators, who have been good and go after their fifth straight home win tonight. Or the Vancouver Canucks, who are 0-5-2 and, and the worst team in the NHL. The Buffalo Sabres, they say, are the ones wearing the disguise. Which, by the way, Lee, you've been invited by me and Gray Eagle to come to the Halloween Howler Friday night here at the Event Center. Ooh. Let's get it on. If you're interested. We got to go get some uh, (laughs) costumes. They asked me if I wanted to go to Gordon Lightfoot last night here. I said, nope. Uh, Baby. I saw him at the 2012 Grey Cup. I'm good. Man, I got a good story for you there, but I can't tell it on air. With Gordon Lightfoot. Last minute of play in the RP show. Here's, I read the story on CTV about how, why we don't have the announcement of the halftime act. They're like, well, it's because of COVID. It's because of this. It's like they're the only ones trying to book acts. And I'm sure there's a lot of pressure. That's why I wanted to ask you. You mentioned Twain and Bieber. Like, how much out of the park do we need to knock this? I don't even know. I'm losing I, interest. Fast. I just hope, you know what? It better be big. Because if it's not a big act, then boy, look out. From Kevin the Medium, thanks for an awesome show, my friend. I laughed and I yelled at the TV. <laughs> sure, a lot did. Always a good time. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow, Football Friday. Tim Hunter's going to be here. We'll play NFL, deal or no deal. Life is great. I hope yours is too. Find something to be grateful for and happy. And we'll see you tomorrow, noon Eastern on the RP Show. Who has more fun than us? <laughs> Have you subscribed to the Rod Peterson Show YouTube channel yet? Head to youtube.com slash the Rod Peterson Show now.